Joining us here on the Bear Report podcast to continue our prospect preview series, Tommy Ashley of Inside Carolina. He's going to give us some insight on quarterback Drake May, as well as maybe a couple other North Carolina players that are in um, contention to be drafted in the 2024 NFL draft. First off, Tommy, thanks so much for making the time and joining me today, man. Yeah, man. Never a bad time to talk football, and I appreciate you inviting me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, let's get right into it. Um, when Bears fans see North Carolina number 10, they get bad flashbacks um, of Mitch Trubisky. Why is Drake May different than Mitch Trubisky as a prospect coming out? Ooh, that's a, that's an interesting question, right? Because when Mitch came out, everybody had him as the guy. And mm -hmm. I think the biggest difference for the two is Mitch started one year at North Carolina. Now, he had a good uh, – when he was able to step in on certain occasions early in his career, he did well. And then that, that one year he started – um, he flashed some things that obviously um, the Chicago Bears and others thought he should be a high draft pick. I think Mitch's problem is that he was drafted over two guys that have turned out to be pretty good, and he has not been. So you turn to Drake May, and you've got a situation where Drake's been in North Carolina's program for three years. He started two, um, and he is, first of all, he's a different type player. He's got all the measurables, right? 6'4", mm -hmm. 230, um, great pedigree, great arm, tough, and all that. But I think Drake's ability to play that extra year has been big for his development at North Carolina because it's allowed him to see a lot more than maybe Mitch did. And uh, But I can certainly understand the angst. Uh, I mean, we're down here in North Carolina, so – we know about uh, <laughs> drafting quarterbacks that did, that haven't panned out thus far here with the Carolina Panthers. So it'll be interesting to see the comparisons if, if he does go to the Bears in April. But, yeah, different guys, different skill sets, different body types. And I think Drake's, Drake's probably a little better than Mitch Trubisky. And that's why I asked because, you know, I can't blame Bears fans. I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen it on our message board on 24-7. It's – they get that. They see that ten. They get the fear. Um, you know, I always live by the rule. You know, scout the player, not not the uniform. Um, right. in, in this case with Drake, you know, I, I've watched some tape on him. Very good player. Very good quarterback. He committed to Alabama, and North Carolina had Sam Howell. Um, you know, at that time, and, and Drake came in. He flipped his commitment to, to North Carolina. How important was that for North Carolina's program? Um, you know, not only the skill set, but maybe getting, you know, a five-star recruit like that on campus at that position. Oh, hundred percent. Just huge for Mac Brown's 2.0 time at North Carolina. You know, he, he committed to Alabama. He is a legacy at North Carolina. His brother obviously won a national championship for North Carolina basketball. He, he comes from a family who his been in athletics and been in high level athletics his entire career and his father was a quarterback at North Carolina. So while he committed to Alabama, which quite frankly was a shock to everybody around here, Mac Brown never never gave up, stayed on him and it was just, you know, I guess it was destiny for him to end up at Carolina and do what he did. You're right about Sam Howe. He came with Sam, they're friends, they're from the same general area out Charlotte Way and was able to study under Sam Howe, learn from Sam Howe, and then step into the leadership role as the starting quarterback. But I think the biggest thing for the program is it showed that big-time players, especially big-time quarterbacks, could come to North Carolina and be in big-time roles and then have some success getting drafted or whatever. Sam Howe, of course, drafted a lot later than maybe he should have been, but we'll see how that shakes out. But Drake's legacy at North Carolina is that he continued that May legacy. They didn't have this, they didn't win as many games as they should have. They started 9-1, and one, they started 6-0, and oh, and couldn't really close out the season. But for Mac Brown and North Carolina football, it really – it's got us doing this, right? It's got yeah. us doing these type shows, and we're talking about North Carolina football on an NFL on a national level, and that's something that wasn't the case maybe before Drake and before Sam Howell. In terms of Drake's skill set, what stands out the most to you? I know, I know, everyone likes to rave about the big arm. Um, and, you know, pocket presence is there. He he's got some mobility to him. What what mainly stands out to you that NFL scouts are gonna rave over? Well, you know, he he's got all the tools. Right, he, he's got a great mind. 
He's got the physical tools we've talked about. He's got the arm. Um, his ability to improvise and make plays off, tar you know, off uh, platform and to extend plays is a huge deal in his game. He does have some technical things he needs to clean up, and that'll come from having a good quarterback coach in the league and, and developing. Um, but as far as his skills, I mean, you can sum it up. He's got it. He mm -hmm. has struggled. I mean, we've seen quarterbacks with great skills. We've seen quarterbacks that have put up great numbers in college that weren't able to translate it. It happens every year. We talked about one just a second ago. But Drake is just one of those guys that, you know, his, he commands the presence on the field. He commands the presence in the huddle and in the locker room. And then he goes out and he makes plays consistently that just shouldn't be made. And, and you can get into the technical side of – of everything that he does, but the it factor for him and the production, you can't deny that he's been able to do it on a on a high level for a couple of years at North Carolina. He sat the one year behind Sam Howell. He won a quarterback battle. Um, do, do you think sitting that one year, learning from Howell, benefited him to go into that summer winning that battle and essentially, you know, from day one, um, kind of just – you know, took over that job and was just, you know, yeah, was over tore, from there. Yeah, he tore it up. I mean, starting from game one almost. But, yeah, I think any quarterback, you know, we live in a, in a day and age, whether it's in, uh, NFL or, or in college, where guys are expected to come in and produce right away. Mm -hmm. you, you see a, a team like Texas with their quarterbacks this year. Um, you've got many believe is the second coming and Arch Manning, and he's watched. I think it benefits him down the road. Um, I think for Drake to be able to sit behind Howell, not only learn the offense, not only do all the football stuff, but all the off-the-field stuff, learn how to be the leader, learn how to deal with the press, um, have one of your best friends going through everything that you're about to go through matters. And I think that, especially at the quarterback position, to be able to sort of ease into it rather than throwing in the fire. Some guys can excel if they're just thrown into fire. But you look at a guy like uh, the LSU quarterback. He wasn't very good last year, but he had that year to grow, and then he got really good this year and, and produced. So I think Drake's ability to not have to do it right out of the gate paid off at North Carolina. I don't have any doubt that he could have put up big numbers as a freshman at Carolina. Mm -hmm. Would he be as good a quarterback? I, I don't know about that. And the same will apply in the pros. Now, I know, and you know as well as I do, if you're drafted in the top five as a quarterback, you're expected to play pretty much immediately. And we've seen how that's worked out. Um, even some of the greats were terrible their first couple of years. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I think Drake's ability to watch a little bit at North Carolina is going to benefit him down the road. So whether it is Chicago, New England, Washington – um, it's very likely he's going to go in that top three, probably be second quarterback right now off the board, um, depending on what happens for us, the pre-draft process. All three of those teams, he'd probably come in. I guess Washington, you know, he, he may sit behind Howell for a little bit there. He'd probably come in Chicago and they'd want to start right away. Same thing with New England. Do you think he, he would be able to do that? Do you think that's something that, might hinder his development a little bit, or is he kind of built for that? Is he is he going to be ready to go day one? Yeah, I think he's built for that just because um, where he comes from, you know, I mentioned his father earlier, but it's a different level when you get to the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you can be as ready, and I, and I think coming in for him, he would be as ready as any quarterback could be. Okay. But it's still the next step. <clears throat> Yep. It still depends on your offensive line. At North Carolina, his offensive line, um, while ha they had some veteran guys and some guys that have gone on and played in the league, they didn't block the best in the world sometimes. And he was able to use his skills on the college level to get himself out of trouble and then to make just ridiculous plays with his feet and with his arm on the run. Not so sure you can do that that much in the pros. You can for a little while. Um, you mentioned Washington. We saw Sam Howe when he finally got to play this year. He started off solidly, right? Mm -hmm. He was making plays and doing all that, and then it sort of catches up with you um, because the NFL is such a, a, a thin margin of success. If you don't compete at a high level all the time, you're going to get um, caught up to and run past. And I think for Drake, 
can he come in and do it? Sure. I, I think he would have some success and he'd do some things, but I also think that that would hinder him maybe down the road into being as good as people hope he can be. But mentally, that dude is nails. I, I mean, you're not going to find a guy more prepared and more mentally ready to do it. Um, but like I said, it's a big jump. It's a big jump for anybody. And uh, I think how you handle adversity, and this is the interesting discussion, and I don't want to segue off to no, you're fine. Williams, <laughs> but, but how you handle diverse, adversity when things go sideways tells me a lot about how you're going to be as a pro quarterback. Um, if you can't handle the press after a bad game, if you can't handle – um, getting hit on every play and then not having success and throwing interceptions, then you're going to struggle, especially if you go to one of these cities where the media is going to be all over you, where, where you're going to have to deal with all that trauma. I think Drake is uniquely prepared for that just because of what he's been through and where he comes from with his family. Um, like I mentioned, one brother won a national championship at Florida in baseball. One brother won a national championship in North Carolina in basketball. Another brother played basketball for North Carolina, and then he's the baby of the bunch. And I think everybody would agree that he's the most talented and the most physically ready. And I think the mindset and the mental ability that he'll have from all he's dealt with leads him to have some success that maybe others would falter with. I'm glad you brought that part up um, about you know the press and handling it. Chicago is a huge, huge bark in the media. Um, We've never had a quarterback that's really, you know, been that that guy. I mean, there's been guys that have tried, you know, the latest Justin Fields, and there's a chance, you know, he might actually be the guy to trade the pick. I'd lean towards taking another quarterback. Um, when people talk about Caleb Williams, I see it a lot. You know, the the he didn't talk after some games. He was, you know, crying with his mom. Personally, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I, I like my players to have emotion, um, but you do bring up a good point because. If you can't handle the press in a big city like Chicago, um, it's probably not going to go well for you. It, from your experiences, maybe colleagues' experiences inside Carolina, what was May like in the press? And, and you know, after losing, let's say to you know NC State or, or Virginia, he didn't shy away from meeting the media. How much does that impact you know how you see him and how you see his stock in the NFL? Yeah, I, I mean. It, you know, it's, it's interesting the discussion about how it plays in the NFL. One thing Drake never did is he never shied away from anything. He never blamed anybody else. He blamed himself a lot more than he probably deserved to simply because it was always on him. He understood that as I'm the quarterback, um, you know, so-and-so dropped the pass. Well, I should have put it in a better spot. I, I mean, you, you have those type situations he never took an opportunity to pass it off on anybody else whether it was the offensive line whether it was a, a miss pass in, a, interference call whether it was a drop or, or whatever it was always i should have done this better i should have done that i mean he had some elite games and oftentimes the first thing he mentions is the one or two throws he missed and so you've got a guy that owns it and doesn't pass off and i agree with you I like guys that play with emotion, right? But I don't like guys that duck when things are bad yeah. and um, everything's, you know, flowers and roses and we're all happy, something goes off the rails and, and now we're not talking to people or, or whatever. You can't do that in the pros. They yeah. will eat you alive oh, yeah. in Chicago. I mean, I think the only place worse, um, quote unquote worse, would be a New York market or, yeah. or something. And people always talk about, you know, college players and fan bases are nuts and all that. The pros are on a whole different level um, with what they expect. And I think Drake, well, he won't be perfect wherever he goes. You know, I think given the right situation, that's another thing. NFL is all about situation, opportunity, and fit. He goes to a, a place where he's provided the opportunity to be good. I think you don't have to worry about him not fulfilling that for some other reason, you know, outside of the, the physical skills and the mental skills. I, I think he's a good kid. He was raised correctly. He was 
always told that it's on you, buddy. And he certainly owned that at his time at North Carolina, especially in games like NC State. I mean, yeah, you can't lose to NC State at North Carolina, and he did twice. And yet he was first and foremost to talk about it and, and to say yeah, it was on me. Yeah, that's that's a big positive. And you know, like I said, I don't want to brag on Caleb Williams. I also don't think Caleb's USC PR staff did a yeah. great job of of doing that. Um, you know, helping him out there. Um, you know, looking at it, you, you mentioned the situation and no bias here. I think when you look at the number one pick, it's not for the bears. It's not a number one pick, bad roster. It's Carolina's pick. You know, the bears were number nine, you know, fringe a couple games out of the playoffs. They'll have DJ Moore. Um, they'll probably draft another wide receiver. They have talent. They have a good defense. They have maybe a lame duck head coach. Um, and you look at New England, they have a new coach. Washington, they have a new coach. I don't know how much you follow the NFL with, with that, um, but you kind of talked about it. How much would that factor into maybe May's success? Because I, I, I know his relationship with Mac Brown is strong. Um, you mentioned the family ties. Do you think it would benefit him more to go to someplace like Chicago, which has DJ Moore, has a good defense, potentially a lame duck coach? Or do you think you know the other two might be benefit him because it's – Two new head coaches. He's he's married to them, but the weapons just you know they maybe aren't there for him. Yeah, I, I think you know I, everybody has stereotypical responses of certain teams. You know, for the longest time Washington has been a dumpster fire, and Sam Howell went there. That would be weird, right? Yeah. If the Commanders draft Drake with Sam Howell. For, for North Carolina people, that's going to be a weird situation now. And the pros is business. It's yeah. 100% business. And I don't think it would be a detriment to have somebody you're best friends with on the roster. Um, as far as coaches and coaching styles, I think for Drake, I don't, and I don't want to hype him up too much because I think there's some issues there that could be worrisome at the next level. But I think that I don't know that any of the coaching – issues or whatever are going to matter to okay. him. He's going to work the same everywhere. And I think um, his ability to blend in and to work with whoever you have, we saw him, he had Phil Longo his freshman year or redshirt freshman year. And then that sophomore year, last season, they had Chip Lindsey. You had Drake who didn't once complain didn't once do anything. He just went out there and did his job. And, he, you know, he, maybe a season was a little bit less stat-wise this year, but I thought he got to be a better quarterback because of his ability to take instruction. He also had Clyde Christensen as an analyst okay. uh, that helped him. It was a big name and certainly in professional football. But he, So as far as the coaching staff, I think for any quarterback going into the league, what's most important? A style that fits how you play and a coaching staff willing to adjust what they do that fits your style. And I think that um, having DJ Moore and having receivers that can make plays is huge for any quarterback in the league, not just Drake. And I think that's what matters the most for success, especially for rookie quarterbacks. I mean, you look at C.J. Stroud at, at Texas. Yep. They, uh, How does he do so well And a guy like Bryce Young at, at the Panthers, who the Panthers had way above CJ on their board for a bunch of reasons that I've yet to figure out. <laughs> you know, how, how's the difference? So it's all about fit. It's all about that. But I think Drake is equipped to, to deal with whatever he's given. And he's not going to be outworked. And he's not going to sulk. And he's not going to um, get down on himself because he's supremely confident. So a long answer for, for a long talk for a short answer that I, situations always matter yeah but i think he's going to have success based on him he's going to have success or failure based on how he does not the outside forces i think a few more and i'll let you go and again i appreciate your time um this is really good insight when i look at drake's some of those games you know you look uh tez walker had the whole ncaa thing which you know the ncaa is just eh. um which was kind of there. yeah it was it was ridiculous <laughs> um and then, you know, it looks like Kobe Paysauer was hurt. Um, he didn't have Josh Downs this year, who, who ended up being a draft pick in Indianapolis. 
it looks like he was throwing, and I don't want to say backups because I know the college roster is, you know, you're nine, 10 deep in wide receiver sometimes. Yeah. Um, but he didn't really have the weapons that a lot of these other big quarterbacks have. Um, it doesn't, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't seem like it hindered his game really at all. He, he found ways to make it work. Yeah, I mean, he had to adjust. Obviously, Tez Walker was a different animal, and mm -hmm. we've seen what he's doing on draft boards. I mean, when you've got a guy that can outrun everybody on the field, yeah. you just go long. And, and Drake's game, if you look at Drake's grades on PFF or, or whatever you want to check, his deep passing is ridiculously elite. And so you, you have a Drake or, excuse me, a Tez Walker that can just go get deep. You, you know, it's like the backyard football we used to play. Yeah. It's like – go long <laughs> and he could do that with Tez Walker but when when Tez is not out there and, and Kobe Paysauer I think was a very underrated injury for North Carolina I think that was a big deal but Drake's ability to adapt Carolina had an elite tight end room that didn't get much talk about it should have but uh you know he, his ability to hit plays I think for Drake his ability to trust multiple guys, you know, you, you saw guys have some drops early in games or early in the season, and he kept going back to them. I think they completed passes to, what, 10 or 12 guys a day or a game. I oh, mean, he, sp he spread it around. Um, but, yeah, it, you need a wide receiver one consistently in, in the pros especially, but also in college. Um, but I think that his ability to – that's one thing that Sam Howell didn't do as well at Carolina that Drake did, I think. And I think that's a fair criticism is Sam relied on Josh Downs a lot. If you look at the numbers with Josh Downs, I mean, Sam would throw it to Josh every single time. And if he's open, he's open. But yeah. you still got to spread the ball around. Drake was able to spread it around a lot more, even without Tez out there early, um, even without when Kobe went down. Guys like J.J. Jones and Gavin Blackwell and those other guys were able to step up. Maybe not, maybe not true ones, but he still didn't have a, a problem getting on the ball and, and doing it all over the field, every throw you could make and all that. So you still got to have receivers in the pros, though. We know yeah. that because if, yeah. if if you're in if you're an NFL quarterback and you don't have a, a solid one or an elite one, then they're just gonna get after you all day every day and uh we've seen how that's fared for some quarterbacks look at like i said carolina panthers i mean yeah. you get your quarterback killed if you don't have guys that can get open yep speaking of tez walker my final question i, I want to just get a little insight on him um you know the bears are at, are at nine probably take a wide receiver there maybe if they trade back um you know, they don't have a second round pick and, and I'm looking and it looks like Walker is anywhere from that, you know, early day two, late day one. I think I even saw him to Kansas City um, at the end of the first round. What makes his game so special? And, and you know, what is his strengths um, from from the, the I, I want to say small time you saw him in Carolina? I know it was about eight, nine games, um, something like that. Hey. What really what stood out to you about him? Oh, he can fly. I uh, mean, he is. If you don't get your hands on him, he's going to run past you. And uh, he did that quite a lot. I mean, you look at Miami. Miami's got guys that are going to play in the league, and he cooked them all night long. I think for Tez, you've got a guy that's hungry. Um, you've got a guy who – and I don't know how much you want to get into his journey, but he 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 tears his leg up his senior year in high school. He, he goes to Central, North Carolina Central. Central cancels their season during the COVID pandemic he goes to kent state he plays well he wants to come home and play closer to home he comes to north carolina ncaa you mentioned screws him over repeatedly um, and then he finally gets an opportunity and he, and he really played well for north carolina in those short eight games he's hungry and he he's got a lot more in the bag to get to get better but if you look at his tape there's not an NFL scout that can't look at his tape against Georgia when he played for Kent State or against Washington for Kent State or while he was at Carolina that doesn't say this guy is a difference maker and can stretch the field. Because I often talk about gravity when I'm talking about players, whether it's okay. you know, on the basketball court or you know wide receiver. Guys with gravity suck players to them, right? You have to put two guys on him 
and they pull those two guys off of him, and then it opens up it for opens up the game for everybody else. I think for Tez. Um, his speed, he, he needs to work on his route running. I, you know, I thought he would come back to North Carolina, and, and I thought until those draft grades of early second and first started to pop up a little bit, I think he was planning to come back. But he, he's got things to work on. But there's not a – you cannot teach speed like that, and you can't teach hands like that and catching ability like that. And I think that's why you'll see him have some success. Um where he goes, I think first round may be a stretch, but it wouldn't surprise me late first round, second second round. I don't think he falls beyond that. But And he's a great kid. I mean, he, he, comes, um, he comes ready to prove himself. And I think that's big because he's never had it easy. And we see a lot of athletes these days that have had it easy their entire time and, and they don't really blossom into what they could be. I think Tez is one of those guys that – you want a dog, but you also want somebody that's hungry to eat all the yeah. time. And I think Tez is that guy. Tommy, I appreciate your time, man. Um, are you on Twitter X, whatever, whatever they're calling it these yeah, days? I still um, call it Twitter. <laughs> at, T, yeah, at T Ashley, I see, of course, InsideCarolina.com is we cover North Carolina football, basketball, baseball, and, and some of the other sports. I mean, it's if you want to go to a college website that covers and, – and, I'm not tooting on horn. The numbers lay it out. We're the, we're yeah. the top college website, especially on the 24-7 network, but also in, in the internet period and, and got a great group of guys that cover it. Shout out to Jason Staples. I mean, he is our football analyst, and he's done all these um, breakdowns of all the players. If, if folks want to check out yeah. his stuff on Drake May or Tez Walker or whatever, Jason's done those scouting reports um, okay. back before last season. So. A lot of good stuff. I'll shoot you yeah. the links and an email yeah. for you. And uh, but yeah, it's it's fun time to talk college football any any time. Not a giant professional guy. I, I do pay attention when North Carolina players are in it. But um, yeah, anytime you need me, I'm always there. For sure. Maybe uh, maybe Drake will land in Chicago. We'll, we'll see. There's a lot of time to go until the draft. But I really Absolutely. appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. No problem. Anytime.